Hi, I'm Valerie Davis, CEO of Assembly North America. I'm here with Evan Havorka, VP of Product and Innovation at Albertsons Media Collective. Um, we're here kicking off Can at the Palais in Stagwell's content studio. So thank you, Evan, for being here with me. Thank you for having me. So we're gonna have a little conversation about marketing. If you know, what else are we gonna do here at Can? So Evan, tell me, in an increasingly competitive environment with um, diminished consumer attention, the notion of brand fans is becoming more important. How is Albertsons Media Collective treating consumers as fans? Yeah, you know, as a retail media network, we have um, a dual role to play. Like, as a representative, representative of the Albertsons shopper, and that's our number one reason for being, keeping people coming into our stores, our website and app, and shopping and finding what they need to fulfill their, their food, pharmacy, and pet needs. Um, that's the core business then of what our media collective can bring to our CPG clients. So we have two, two, um, two pockets to keep happy. Our shoppers coming in at high frequency, buying um, new products, continuing to buy their loyal products. That's the core base of what we bring to the CPG marketing clients. So we need brand fans on both sides of the house. Um, as product and innovation lead for the collective though, the, the media side of this, the CPG client, is my first concern. And so keeping them happy is really um, falls into two buckets. We want to make sure it's frictionless. So when they come and play with the retail media network, you know, they're looking and seeing products that are similar to things they've bought traditionally through an agency or, or directly, you know, like display, search, um, on and off platform. But we also have some unique things like in store that may be different than anything they've bought before. We want to make sure that's frictionless, um, transparent, performative. And so how many hoops do they have to jump through to get to that is a, is a metric we try to minimize. And then on the other side, we want to get innovative and get creative because retail media has been around for a while, um, but there's been some slow adoption of certain innovations. We're here to really put a stake in the ground as the innovative driver in retail media in North America, and we're doing just that. You're going to see a lot of good press from us uh, on this can trip. We had a lot last year. Um, so making the basics simple and then really innovating and, and getting their attention on some cool new opportunities. So in your role, I have this question for you. How is Albertsons transforming marketing over the next five years? Yeah, we see, um, you know, five years is a long way to break out, but uh, there's some core concepts that we have to thread um, in year one, year two, year three. As we get into year five, there's probably some new things we haven't seen yet. AI, where does AI fit in the adoption curve? It's a very buzzworthy word. Yes. We'll be hearing it at most of the conferences on this trip. Um, but it does play a role. So figuring out when and where to adopt some of that new advanced ad tech into a retail landscape can be tricky, but um, in service of that CPG, we need to find ways to tap into AI, machine learning, automation. So using ad tech and ad tech partnerships to help elevate our products is, is one way we do it. And the other way is really, what is that CPG interested in, right? It's, it's the media component. I mean, we're great at finding audiences on and off platform. We're great at showing closed loop measurement. What are there other things a retailer can do to keep them happy? So you think of like a merchandise expansion, what, what they want to see from like inventory access or ability to co-partner with us on new product launches. Things that you wouldn't traditionally put into the media bucket or the marketing bucket, but that are in honor of that CPG retailer relationship. Those are our two strategies. Awesome, yeah, AI is definitely the buzzword at this conference and all of the ones I've been going to lately. And we're taking it pretty seriously as well for yeah. our, our clients. Um, Digital media used to be part of the equation in the marketing mix, right? But now it's really the fundamental part, right? So how is Albertsons Media Collective leaning into the digital first connected consumer experience? Yeah, it's a very small role in the grand scheme of the shopper behavior with a traditional retailer in the US. Um, most have the vast majority of sales happening in the brick and mortar. But that digital side is so powerful because that is our connection to the ID ecosystem and to how we find audiences on and off platform. So really how we lean in is build a highly penetrated CRM system. You know, we're pushing 90% penetration of our loyalty program, which means every SKU, every item that runs through our point of sale system is tied to an individual, right? So we're not aggregating or manipulating data to show um, performance. That loyalty program is the same ID system that we use to log into our site and app which again has high penetration, high loyalty. So even though the transaction might be happening on or offline, majority offline for US retailers, the ID systems and the logins and the connection of all of our ecosystem runs on a single ID. So that's our beautiful onboard then to go find that same person on a Pinterest, Meta, you know, Trade Desk, Google platform um, with the same fidelity and accuracy that we can do on platform. 
Without the digital component, without a highly adopted website and app, it would be very difficult to take all your offline value and find it across the web. Oh my God, you're talking my language. <laughs> CRM is the thing we it's talk thing. to our clients about. It's like what is old is new again. If you yeah, think back in cloud marketing, um, and it's so important now with the deprecation of the cookie and the yeah. you know. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. We, we see deprecation of cookies and consumer protection of data. I mean, it's a good thing for consumers in general, so great for our shoppers. Yeah. We see it as a way to, to minimize some of the middle players as well, some of the people who are drafting off of third-party data sets. Yes. Those are drying up, and what's left is first-party data. And so if you're a first-party data owner who also owns inventory or has inventory partnerships that transact on that ID, there's nothing better, right? right. Especially if the conversion yeah. is there too. Well, that's why it's so important to every client. And there's so many clients who just don't even have it. They don't right. own it. Like they think about CPG, you guys hold the first party data. Just think about how those brands really are going to rely on you guys for that. Um, yeah. Evan, oh, sorry. sorry. We, don't, we don't think of it as a uh, walled garden in that aspect yeah. though. We do need to protect and own it. Yes. But we want to create um, safe, uh, transparent ways for the CPG to leverage exactly. that data, yeah. right? It's not a um, uh, holding it against anyone. It's like, hey, how do we open up the door a little bit so you can safely do the things you want to do as a CPG and we can find safe ways to do that. Yeah, I meant yeah. partner, not lean. No. Um, but it, it is very true and I think um, it's super important for all brands to start getting at that first party data considering where we're going. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. I yeah. hope you enjoy the rest of Can and you get you. out of it um, everything you want to and um, I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you for hosting us. Bye. Bye.